Life for the Ghana people has changed significantly since the arrival of Europeans. This interview with Lefevre High School students and the Brodie sisters tells the story of the Indigenous history of Port Adelaide. Prior to contact, Port Adelaide looks like a very different place. There were no buildings. There were natural trees, grasses, reeds, black swans on the river and the Ghana camps along the coast. The black swan was a protected bird for the Ghana people. The camps used to stretch from what is now Glenville all the way to what we know is the outer harbour. There was a lot of food around and good hunting, both in the ocean and on land. The land was very important to the Ghana people. Back then the people used everything that was around them in order to make food, shelter and clothing. My name's Margaret Brody and my history I relate to my Aboriginality. I'm part Ghana, part Ngunnawal and part West Coast. I'm Cathy Brody. Um, my background, yeah, I'm a Nunga. To me it's important, it's the person I am. It sets my pathway of living, my life. I feel it. It just marks the person I am. And it gives me a sense of belonging. I know where I belong. Yes, I feel very closely connected to it. It's the birthplace of my great-grandmother and it has um, family significance for me. Um, and it will for generations, I think, in my family. And I also think it's an important place, not only for me, but for any Nunga that lives around the Port Adelaide area, because it holds our history. And yeah, I like going back there, and, and it, if anything, it means more to me since my mum's passed away. Mm. From what I hear, there was a lot of sand dunes. It was very mm. sandy, high sand dunes, clear waters, sufficient food, um, luscious land. Where um, the Joyce Nedden Park is now, that was like um, an estuary for food. It was The river continued up to Gilman's and I know that it, just from looking at books and stuff, even listening to mum, that it was abundant with like black swans back then. So there were plenty of swan eggs. A lot of crustaceans in the water as well. Some of the Aboriginal men had walked all the way to Outer Harbour back then just to throw fishing nets in. They could, yeah, catch fish all along the area there. It's hard to imagine looking at it now that it was ever like that back then. Well, we've got um, sort of pencil drawings of, you see Semaphore Road how it is now? Um, in our pencil drawing, Semaphore Road's like a dirt track, leads straight to the beach, to the sand, to the water. And the water used and to come up to, the original tide used to come up to Carlisle Street. Mm. So that's where your school is, I think. That's where the original tide came. Um, that was when colonisation took place. The whole river, Port River, had campsites all the way down. Mm -hmm. So what you're hearing is just a, a really small portion of the Aboriginal history of Port Adelaide. Dispossession, mm. assimilation, um, forced removal. Unfortunately for everybody, it wasn't happy times. Mm. They set up their homes and our campsites and they, they don't acknowledge that the Aboriginals' stories or homes, because we don't have four walls and a ceiling, a humpy doesn't look like a home to whitefellas, so mm. it wasn't seen as a proper way of living. Colonisation, their future took away our history. And that's why we have things like this, to try and retell it so that it's never forgotten. Dreamtime stories for me came back when my Nana was alive. Um, it was about, there was a learning lesson in it. It was about our um, everyday lessons, that we learn respect for our elderly and respect for each other, respect for ourselves and to always be proud of who we are. Mm. At, at, certain, at a certain age, we've lived and bred, bred that culture. We, it's, it's like a lifeline for me. 
I see a lot of the culture not being embedded in the young ones anymore so much. I think it just pays more for you to learn more from your mums and dads and grandparents and listen to the stories and learn from them. Latalari is a matrilineal story. It's been handed down to four generations of women now. Our great grandmother got moved off of there in about 1840s, roughly, 1840. And they basically went from Glanville through the fringe dwelling camps along the coastal line till she got to Glenelg on Collie Reserve. And that's where she gave birth to our grandmother, our nana now. And if you want to see what Laura Glanville Spender looks like, you'll see the national referendum picture of the Aboriginal woman wearing the cloak with a little baby on the back. That's Laura Glanville Spender. She walked 200 kilometres to be one of the first Aboriginal women to vote in South Australia. The park to me is just recognition for Ghana people, for our family. It's partly educational for young people too. I feel like we finally have something solid in concrete gives us recognition now. My mum strived firstly to get um, a cultural centre, interpretive centre, information centre in Port Adelaide. And part of that was for educational purposes. It was also to um, create employment for Aboriginal people. I'll still rally to see the cultural centre go up. I've had um, some meetings with um, consultation in Port Adelaide with Land Management Corporation about it now being included with the Dolphin Sanctuary. Um, and we just haven't heard when, when it's going to happen. Yeah, but we'll strive to keep fighting for it. So we will keep working with council yeah. um, to try and get the Cultural Interpretive Centre up and running. And I think it's the least we could do to, you know, after the, the long fight that mum had.